guys through the last weekend in March and after watching this hive get robbed out in February, <laughs> we're gonna do a dead out autopsy and try to see if we can determine what went on. Um, that was a honeybee. Speak of the devil. The, uh, the fact that it got wrapped out means that it was probably already compromised to some extent. So we're going to look and see if we can figure out what happened. A couple of dead ones on the inner, or the outer cover, top cover. Um, here's their synthetic pollen patty. Doesn't look like too much of that was eaten. No, and some fondant. Just leave that on there. Frozen to the top, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, so I'm just gonna take off the whole inner cover with that on it. Check it out. Oh, you know what? I mm. see the cluster. So if you look down in there. Yep, there it is. Alright, so let's take this top box off. And it looks like it's one more box down, right? We hear you, hen bit. We got a chicken in the shed, thinking of laying an egg. <laughs> she likes to lay on top of the straw bales in the shed there. Yeah, so that build up in there, I don't it know what that be. is. Hard to say. Yeah, although, you know what that looks like? Oh, fondant maybe. Tastes like? Oh gosh, wow, you're gutsy. <laughs> <laughs> Alright, so let's see what this looks like here. Oh, there they are. Yeah. So they're in the second box up from the bottom. Basically right in the middle. Oh, this is sad. Ooh, it's nasty. Lots of mold. And Gross. Um, which isn't necessarily a sign that we had a moisture problem, uh, because as Dr. Megan Milbreath was saying, once you've got dead bees, you're going to get decomposition. Yeah. Um, and yeah, you see a lot of bees head first in the cells, which is a uh, starvation. St star freeze sign, which probably just means that the cluster was too small going or into... Or they didn't have enough food, right? It's hard to tell. Well, they did get robbed, but the primary signs of robbing we saw were in February. Yeah. And we definitely saw what seemed like signs of life of this hive in January. Um, ooh, it does smell a bit. Yeah. <laughs> but again, that's normal, um, you know, normal for having a lot of dead stuff. Hmm. But in terms of cluster size, we're looking at something only slightly larger than a softball, which is frankly too small. Um, and so what happens is they have a large surface area to volume ratio as compared to a larger cluster, which has a smaller surface area to volume ratio. and is better able to maintain heat and also is more mobile within the hive to be able to move to food sources. So it's just bizarre because you just have this sense of them being frozen in time. Mm. Um, the, the way some of them are positioned, like here there were bees kind of stretched between the two frames. But Will and I were talking earlier about, you know, in our first beekeeping season, we didn't have any, uh, wow, look at that damage to the cone. Yep. 
we didn't have any hives even survive into the winter. We were all deaded out by October, November, um, due to wasp robbing, I think, at that point. Yep. But, uh, like I was saying earlier, if a, hi a hive is getting robbed, then it's probably already compromised in some way. It's unable to defend itself. So, um, what Dr. Milbreath was recommending was basically making sure that you have large, healthy, strong colonies going into the winter. Um, so our strategy was the opposite of that, where we tried to overwinter each hive individually to kind of see what would happen. Um, and also in the hopes that we would have, you know, all the hives, and a lot of hives survive into the spring. But her recommendation would be to combine weaker hives, or even all of your hives, you know, as a small operation, into one. When I opened up the nuke and tried to do an autopsy, it was just lots of bees decapitated because of the mouse was in there eating them. Oh, yeah. So there was no cluster, obvious cluster. So this is also like as far down into this box as we've been, really. I mean, one of the things that I was doing last season was really minimizing my intrusion. <laughs> into the hive, so I don't really recall ever getting all the way down into the bottom brood chamber. Oh, this was kind of interesting to see what was going on down here. This could be robbers that froze. Yep. But yeah, it looks like the main cluster was in the second box up. Um. stored pollen and there's really no reason for us to not reuse the wax that's not moldy right I think you're right about that but there's no sign of uh, Cause foul got... brood because there's barely any brood in there there's no brood to be fouled yeah yep that's all she wrote. You think that may have been the queen? Yeah, look at this. Small hive beetle. Oh, wow. That's the only one we've seen, though. Yeah. That's a bummer. <laughs> Just turned over the screened bottom board and found all of this webbing, as well as chew damage to the wood here, which is uh, an indication of wax moths. Here's one of the larvae. Um, so we're just scraping it off, and so here I'll scrape some more off of this side. Um, you can see the larva in the webbing there. Or maybe the technical term at this point is pupa, I'm not sure. 